Hi, I'm Juliet Ferguson with Sotheby's International Realty. People call me Jet. And I'm here today with Kyle Prasa, attorney. He's a trust attorney. Welcome, Kyle. Thank you very much. It's great to be here. Yeah, thanks so much for coming. We've talked over the past few years and you've done several other videos and we appreciate it. Absolutely. So maybe we could start with some of the basics on how about, how, do, how should, how should, a buyer or a buyer or an owner of property hold title right well that's a really important issue because uh, I know with what you do in selling property there's a lot of hurdles to go through to uh, have a closing mm -hmm. and uh, probably feels that they're done once they've uh, signed and finalized the transaction and their uh, the new owner's name is on the deed but that's that's not really the end of the story because that's right. the different ways there are many different ways you can hold title and you can change the way you hold title during the duration of ownership and there are really key differences in terms of how you hold title sometimes you know people are informed to decide on how to hold title but literally they don't have the answer and they check a box that's which true. could be scary that's true right? that's exactly true and you don't want to give or the title company doesn't want to give legal advice exactly. to the buyer. That's right. right. And so that's right. That's kind of an afterthought. Oh, we'll just check the box. And, and a lot of times clients don't even know how they hold title or they're not sure. Right. Very I, often. And I found that with my own clients, I'll ask them in an interview as we're meeting, how do you hold title? And a lot of times they're not sure. And here right. it is probably their most significant asset. Right. And, and the basic question of how they hold title, they don't even know will be. Yeah, I probably don't even know, but I know you're my person. Right, so you're I'm covered, like, you're and covered. And you told me to do that, one way. <laughs> so, um, but I did have a client recently and her husband passed away and we just sold her house in Seaside, California. And I know she was down as joint tenants and that was a good thing in her case. It can be, yes. So when multiple people own a uh, title, one way is, is joint tenants, and that says when one person dies, the remaining joint tenants automatically inherit, and there's no need to go through probate or through court in that case. In that case, it was definitely better for her. So in that, in that case, it worked out, so she owned it with, uh, with another person. With her husband. With her husband. Passed away. And so because they had it in joint tenancy, upon his death, it automatically transferred to her, mm -hmm. and it was just a matter of filing some simple paperwork with the county recorder to show that she's on title, no need to go to court. I had uh, a client recently whose uh, relative passed away, mm -hmm. and um, it was held with uh, his mother and his aunt as just tenants in common, which is another way to hold title. Mm -hmm. And because of that, then the deceased person's share was subject to probate, which is a uh, court process that takes time is expensive it'll it'll work you know the, it's, it it's could okay take a lot of time. it can take a lot of time and the court has to be really careful when when it's being asked to use its fiduciary uh, powers sure. and so as a result even though i think everyone does a good job with probate it just does it takes a long time and that and there could are ways sometimes to avoid affect the price they sell their home for depending that's on right. the market that's right well and we've we've actually had a, a similar uh, situation a number of years ago, I had a client that passed, or a client whose father passed away, mm -hmm. and he didn't have any estate planning at all, mm -hmm. and he was behind on some loan payments, and when he died, everything was frozen. So my client, the son, who was going to inherit mm -hmm. everything, couldn't do anything at all. Right. There was going to be a foreclosure, but he couldn't refinance with the loan, he couldn't even talk to them, oh. and we needed to sell the property as soon as possible, and mm -hmm. if you recall, I had to go into court and get an emergency, yes, I do. Uh, emergency uh, petition. And I recall you doing that faster than humanly possible, with, with, I don't know how you did lucky, that. It was lucky, it was lucky. There are provisions where you can do a faster probate if you can show that there's uh, really a need for an emergency, it's mm -hmm. called ex parte. And we did that, but then, even then, we only had about 30 days to try to sell the house for the fair market value, which right. was higher than the loan amount. It was to save some equity for the family. Right. And, and I told I told my client, I said, whenever you say the name Jeff Ferguson, as soon as you say the name, the house is sold, and that pretty much happened. <laughs> <laughs> and but, I say lucky on that one too. That was that was yeah. We, I remember that one now. But if if we didn't have that situation, if title were different, in that case, if title were in a living trust, yeah, um, then the son would have had immediate authority right. we wouldn't have had to worry about the time with the court and will the court approve the emergency petition and, and so forth so it would have been a little easier it would so have. 
I think the bottom line is is title is important, and there are yes. a number of ways to hold title to property. So you talked about joint tenants and, and tenants in common. Joint so tenant yeah joint tenancy means that uh, all the joint tenants are equal owners mm -hmm. always, mm -hmm. and upon the death of one joint tenant, it automatically goes to the surviving joint tenants. Okay. Uh, tenants tenancy in common means that the deceased person's share will likely have to be subject to some sort of court okay. uh, petition. Then there's community property, mm -hmm. and community property the right of survivorship. And finally, you can hold title in a living trust, which in, the, in most cases is the best and most efficient way to hold title. I think it definitely is. I can't imagine not having one. Right. But that's just my opinion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I definitely want to interview you about that so you can explain to people about trust. I'd but be any, happy to do that. Thank you. Anything else you want to add about uh, holding title? Well, in, in California, for a married couple, it's often advantageous if they, if they hold title 50-50, instead of holding it as joint tenants mm -hmm. or tenants in common, to hold it as community property mm -hmm. or community property with right of survivorship because that means when the first spouse passes away, if the surviving spouse wants to sell that property and there's been a lot of appreciation from mm -hmm. the time that they first acquired it, uh, there's usually a much better tax advantage for capital gains tax for the surviving spouse if it's held in some form of community property. So for a married couple, that's definitely something to take a look at. Very important. Yeah. So that that's expresses the importance of having a trust attorney, in my opinion. Right, to have, have good advice to know the consequences. So when you check that box, uh, there are differences between those different boxes that you check in terms of how you want to hold title. Right. And it's uh, prudent to get some good advice yes. on how to do that. Definitely. Thank you so much for your time today, Kyle. You're welcome. We're going to sign off, but if you don't mind giving your phone number. My phone number is 831-920-0205. And my website as well is uh, my last name, Krasa, K-R-A-S-A, krasalaw.com. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you. And here's our, our phone number here, Team Jet, 831-402-3800. Give us a call if you have any questions. Thanks so much for joining our show.